Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and uh, it's time for another Reloading Chat. And today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about caliber selection for your primary shit hit the fan rifle. This is one of the single most debated topics you see anywhere in the gun world, uh, particularly on the internet. Uh, people have very strong opinions about it. People have different ideas about it and they argue about this non-stop as to which is the better round for people to stockpile. Um, 308 Winchester or 762 NATO, depending upon your designation of it, or 556, also 223, again, depending on which version of the cartridge you run. Uh, most rifles are fairly interchangeable with some exceptions, a uh, totally different topic though, uh, regarding obviously 762 NATO, 308, 556 NATO, and 223. Now, as you guys can see here, they're vastly different in size. Now, people love to argue about the pros and cons of each. Um, of course, a lot of guys will also bring in the 762 by 39 but when you kind of think about it logically, other than the fact that you can get it dirt cheap, uh, there's no advantage to it. It is a complete disadvantage all the way around the board uh, compared to either of these. These both bring more to the table, particularly for shit hit the fan. There's a reason no Western military even uses a 762 by 39 In fact, even the Russians have moved away from it. And I know AKM fans are going to not want to hear that, but that's the truth. It's basically the projectile of third world nations and terrorists now for the most part. Um, but, you know, it is cheap and readily available, so I guess if someone was on a budget, they could get a thousand rounds of it pretty easy. Uh, when it comes to the difference between 308 and 223, uh, pretty much, and this does matter though, this matters a lot. The only real difference is or that the 223 is superior in terms of weight, the amount of it you can pack around, and how much you're going to pay per round. Um, that's pretty much the only advantages it has. However, from a logistics perspective, those are not insignificant points. Because in all other areas, when it comes to range, stopping power, barrier penetration, the 308 is hands down the winner by an enormous margin. Um, it is easily doubled to two and a half times the cartridge of 223 is just in terms of sheer power. Um, now the other argument might be made faster rate of fire <laughs> with the 223, but when you're in raw scenarios, a uh, rate of fire may not be your friend when you don't know when you're going to resupply. So why does this matter? Why does this create such big arguments? See what obviously it sounds like the 308 is superior. Uh, well, because ammo costs money. And people who want to stockpile thousands of rounds uh, can spend a whole lot of money on ammo for their weapons. Uh, not to mention, you know, the same ammo and the rifles they're using for that, they got to practice with those rifles to stay proficient. Uh, so it is far more expensive. And I mean, even when you look at an AR platform, you can build a pretty solid, before optics, you can build a pretty solid AR-15 for $1,000, $1,100. Building a good AR-10 is going to cost you a lot more. All right, and then the cost of the ammo on top of it, even for a hand loader, uh, you are going to pay substantially more to even make your ammo for the 308. Uh, so cost starts to become a factor immediately. Absolutely early on, cost is a big, big factor. Expect to pay 50% more for parts, quality parts for the rifle, 50% more for ammo, including even hand loading it. Uh, that's not inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, particularly when you start owning multiple weapons. Now, obviously, you guys see I own both. So I don't have a personal uh, skin in the game, meaning I think they're both fantastic cartridges. I think they both have their role. I've shot a hell of a lot of both of them over my lifetime. I like both cartridges. I think they're both suitable for shit hit the fan scenarios. I think neither one of them is a bad choice. So I'll just put that out there up front. The people who prefer one over the other, if it meets their personal reasons, they're actually correct. Because it has to do with how you foresee a shit hit the fan scenario going down. Um, you know, are you talking about full economic collapse and straight up uh, <laughs> nightmare scenarios? Are you talking about more gradual collapses? Are we talking about do you live in a more rural area or open country? Or are you going to be in an urban area uh, where shots are going to be closer? Are you going to have a place to resupply easily? It's going to be safe where you're going to have your ammo? Or are you going to have to hump everything that you have out somewhere? All right, that's where weight starts to matter a hell of a lot. Uh, meaning, uh, assuming you've got the money and you've got uh, a good rifle 
uh, in that designated caliber for every member of your household, whether it's one, two, three, four, and thousand rounds for it, and I consider that a good baseline. You've got to factor in, you know, are you going to have access to it? Can you move it? How far do you really need to shoot? Are you going to be hunting big game also with it? Uh, because those are important factors, and, and even range. If you're in really open country, and you're going to have a place to resupply, meaning you might own some other property where you have another thousand rounds buried stashed away, you're going to be able to transport some of your ammo around to get it to a couple places where you're going to be moving around where you can resupply, or you're in a stationary compound or community with other people, with other people, who you can trade with and deal with and everything so you've got a fairly stable situation the 308 is going to be vastly superior particularly if you're going to have big game nearby to hunt because the 308 placed well will kill pretty much everything in north america the right bullet the right shot placement you can hunt big game you've got meat a little harder with a 223 it can be done but it's certainly more difficult um, if you're someone who sees that you're probably going to have to pack up and move everything that you have uh, you're going to be in an area with more hiding spaces. Uh, more likely to see very, very close shots instead of long-range engagement. Uh, also close shots with people having a lot of cover, hard cover. Um, you might need more suppression fire. You could run through ammo quicker in whatever engagements you might be in. You're going to have to carry everything that you have or get away with carrying whatever you can carry at a time. You're going to get a hell of a lot more shots. Uh, you're going to be able to carry twice as much ammo. You know, it's not that hard to carry around two or three hundred rounds of 223. That gives you a lot of firepower potential for any given scenario. Uh, carrying two, three hundred rounds of 308, that weight starts to add up real fast. Uh, incidentally, that's kind of the problem you have with the uh, 760 by 39. It weighs almost as much as the 308, but has the power comparable to the 223, maybe slightly more, but it's not a lot more. Uh, with less effective range than either cartridge. Uh, now, as far as some of the complaints that people have about the 223, you know, the round in the development has actually come a long way these days. Um, the military's complaints generally about the 223 are the lack of stopping power, but that's oftentimes due to the fact they're using green tip ammo. Uh, commercially available ammo, well, a lot of which is similar to the military's designated marksman rounds, uh, are far more frangible. They don't re rely on yawing for wounding. Uh, they tend to be a lot more devastating. Uh, they could be fired the, more accurately at longer range, so flatter shooting, uh, better accuracy out far, and better stopping power. Uh, so, I mean, if you're going with uh, open tip match type rounds uh, for your stock power, for your hand loading, for 223, you do bridge the gap with a lot of those problems. But the thing that people have to remember, ultimately, even the best 223 round is still not going to have the stopping power that the 308 has. And you know, same thing, the uh, green tip was designed generally for barrier penetration. It is better at defeating barriers than other 223 rounds, but that does come at the expense of um, it really not being ideal as far as it being really frangible, thin jacket, any of that. Uh, so it doesn't cause the same tissue trauma that you might want uh, to stop a, an attacker fairly quickly at an engagement. So it kind of, it doesn't help really in, in a certain way because it still doesn't catch the 308 as far as barrier penetrating ability. So, you know, what people have to weigh out with this stuff is step back and assess uh, what do you see as your scenario? You know, what do you see happening? Do you, are you going to have to carry around all the ammo that you own? Uh, are you, how much are you going to resupply? How much do you expect to have to use in an engagement? Things like that start to matter. And the weight is really is an enormous factor there. The weight's an enormous factor. Um, but, uh, again, it depends on where you live. So I would say for a lot of people who are in a more of a city region, um, who are expecting a, a true shit hit the fan scenario, uh, I wouldn't really expect to fare very well if you're in the city, to be honest. Uh, really not <laughs> the best situation to be in if things really go bad. But if you are, then yeah, probably the 223, because simply put, where are you going to see seven or 800 yard shots inside of a city that you're ever going to need? You're going to be a lot better off with faster rate of fire, having more ammo available. Not like you're going to be out hunting big game. You're not going to see anything much over 200 pounds. Uh, 
So you're probably better served there. If someone lives in a more rural area where they have resupply catches of their own, uh, they do anticipate doing a lot more hunting. Probably having the need to carry a little less ammo at any given time, uh, the 308 is going to shine a lot more for them. And uh, some people would say, well, if that's the case, then why doesn't the military use uh, 308? Well, simply put, because they need their soldiers to be able to carry a lot of ammo. Uh, they're a team effort. Most infantry forces for any of the NATO forces, and specifically the U.S. military, these guys aren't one or two people out on foot. All right, they're, unless they're a scout sniper team. They're not one or two people out on foot. They're an entire group of people. They also have bigger weapon support. They oftentimes are going to have support from superior firepower. They're going to have artillery support. They're going to have air support. Um, oftentimes the guys with the shooting the 556 are oftentimes going to be there to put down suppression fire for other people. So having the, the ability to carry a lot more ammo, uh, even if it is a weaker ammo, uh, is going to have its, its advantages for the military. And then there's a the logistics end of it. It saves the military a lot of money to give them that caliber, in addition to allowing soldiers to carry a lot more. But uh, what's good for the military is not always good for the civilian. And, and they are a different thing. An organized military force is not always the same as a civilian defending their home, a civilian defending a homestead or property, or a civilian in, in a uh, roll or shit hit the fan scenario. So certain aspects of what the military does would make sense for those people, but a lot of things don't. So you can't always base things on, you know, if it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for me. Uh, but what I would say to guys, a lot of that applies specifically to ammo selection for your rifles, because if you do go with a 5.56, um, I'm going to say, sure, if you want to stockpile some green tip, that's probably okay but you're going to be better off using some sort of open tip match round for a lot of your ammo simply because it's going to shore up a lot of the weaknesses of the 223 round uh, for, for using it for any purpose. Uh, meaning it's going to be accurate out further. It's going to have a lot more wounding capability. Uh, again, again, look at any of the ballistics gel tests comparing green tip to any of the open tip match rounds. You guys will see what I'm talking about. Usually that first six to eight inches in the tissue uh, it's not uncommon to see at least three times the diameter size of hole being put through it. And it has to do with the fact that those open tip match rounds uh, tend to break up easier. They're very thin jacketed. They don't re rely upon yawing to separate and fragment. They rely just upon their velocity alone to start breaking up into pieces and to kind of blow up like a little grenade inside somebody. Um, in addition to the fact that they shoot flatter and they'll shoot further accurately. Um, what I mean there is some of the open tip match rounds or, or even like the tip match kings, um, it might be possible to make accurate shots at six, seven, eight hundred yards with those. Whereas in with the green tip, uh, making a shot, an accurate shot much beyond about 500 yards, you're really outside of the effective range of what the cartridge is capable of doing. Um, in addition to the fact that these rounds are actually, they will actually do more damage. However, you will sacrifice barrier penetration for that. So, uh, again, kind of a complicated topic, and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. I think that people need to look at this and assess what's right for their situation. Uh, I think they're both good rounds. They're both capable rounds. They've both been widely used by military, both been widely used by hunters and civilians, uh, by law enforcement agencies. They're both proven rounds, and neither one is, is the right or wrong answer. Uh, it's just that one might be better for your specific situation than for another person. And at the end of the day, um, that's all you have to go on. You can't sit around worrying about someone else's opinion when you're talking about uh, weapon selections to save your own life and that of your family, irrespective of what the actual scenario is. You need to, to do your research, think things through, and try to make the best choice you can for your personal situation. Uh, and don't always rely upon other people to tell you what's right or wrong. You should listen. Absolutely listen if they're a voice of authority or they sound like they know what they're talking about. But weigh it all out for yourself. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.